America sent seven Apollo missions to the moon. Six of them were successful, one never made it. On the anniversary of that flight, Channel 7's Brian Hackney joins us now to remember unlucky Apollo 13. Telling 25 years ago this week, the world held its breath for three astronauts. They were in the middle of the worst crisis ever known in the Apollo space program. The irony was that to many people, this trip to the moon began as somewhat of a joke. Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Cavett. It was Monday night, April 13th, 1970. Thank you for that sincere applause. At the moment Dick Cavett took to the air, Houston, Roger. Jack Swigert, Fred Hayes, and Jim Lovell were headed for space. This is the crew of Apollo 13. But nobody was watching, partly because this was the third flight to the moon. And partly because a lot of people thought that the space shot was a summer rerun. And uh... Apollo 13 was also on the air that night. 13 Houston, we got a groovy TV picture. Not a single network carried the broadcast. Even the commander said it was routine. Very routine. Everything was just sort of quiet. Oh, and Paul McCartney has left the Beatles. I'm a little late. But at 11.37 p.m., the flight that had captured no one's attention... Here is a special report on Apollo 13. ...captured everyone's. The Apollo 13 spacecraft has suffered a major electrical failure, leaving the astronauts in no immediate danger but ruling out any chance of any lunar landing as of now. Something on board had gone terribly wrong. Okay, Houston, we've had a problem here. This is Houston. Say again, please. Oh, uh, Houston, we've had a problem. The crew reported a loud bang and a shudder. The command module was dying. Okay, stand by, 13. We're looking at it. They were losing power. Their main engine was probably dead. They didn't know why. Then Lovell looked out the window of the spacecraft and saw their oxygen leaking into space. Well, then that's when the old lead weight went out of the bottom of my stomach, you know, and uh, I knew that we were in deep trouble. I knew that we were, uh, uh, our chances of survival were very slim. They were 200,000 miles from Earth. They were living in Odyssey, a car-sized command module attached to a lunar lander, Aquarius. One of two oxygen tanks had simply disappeared. The other was leaking fast. Two of three fuel cells were dead. The last was fading. The emergency has ruled out any chance of a lunar landing and could endanger the lives of the astronauts themselves. That's because at this point they had no way to get home. See, without fuel cells, their main engine was useless. So they faced the horrifying possibility of becoming a permanent satellite, a dead spacecraft carrying three dead astronauts orbiting the Earth and the Moon to this day. Okay, now let's everybody keep cool. We got the uh, limb still attached. The limb spacecraft's good. So if we need uh, to get back home, we got a limb to do a good portion of it with. The LEM, the Lunar Excursion Module, was only supposed to take them to the moon. Now it would have to get them home. And astronauts Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert are making their way through the tunnel to the lunar module, using it as a lifeboat. So now they had to conserve every molecule of power and oxygen. Also, as Jim Lovell has once put it to me, I can breathe very slowly. And they will if they have to. It was now early Tuesday morning. At their current speed, they wouldn't make it home until sometime Friday night. But the LEM was only equipped to last through Wednesday. They had to get home fast, but they only had one big engine left. Right away, Houston. The lunar module engine, designed to work on the moon, never intended to rocket burn a spacecraft all the way back home. But they didn't have a choice. On their present trajectory, they would miss the Earth by 40,000 miles. That burn had to work. We had to get back on that trajectory. Aquarius, and you go for the burn. This is very well the tensest moment of this flight. We should know within a minute or two if the burn was successful. But something that never happened before... 40%. ...happened now. Okay, Aquarius, you're looking good. The burn wasn't good. It was perfect. This has been a very close call, and we're not out of the woods yet, not by a long shot. Their power and water might not last, and within hours they would suffocate on their own carbon dioxide. If I may be serious for one moment and ask the entire audience for a moment of prayer for the crewmen of the Apollo Lord, 13. Your astronauts will come back safe.
there was plenty to pray for. Still days from home, the astronauts realized they were killing themselves. The lunar module's filters, which sucked away their poisonous carbon dioxide, weren't designed to last this long. Is it an overstatement to say that the duct tape saved your life? It certainly did, along with plastic and cardboard. So you might say that on a $20 billion program, without tape, plastic, and cardboard, you're lost. The crew used spacecraft scrap to build this filter, saving a billion-dollar mission with a buck's worth of cardboard box, duct tape, and crystals. They also saved their lives. Okay, stand by. When they jettisoned the damaged part of their spacecraft, and there's one whole side of that spacecraft missing. They saw what had killed the mission. Is that right? And what nearly killed them. And the whole panel is blown out, almost from the uh, base to the uh, engine. An oxygen tank had exploded, creating a huge hole and a new problem. If the heat shields were damaged, the astronauts would never survive the fiery re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Apollo 13 uh, should have entered uh, the Earth's atmosphere at this time. There are four minutes of every re-entry when communication is lost. For the thousands waiting, this four minutes was an eternity. Less than 10 seconds now, uh, we will attempt to uh, contact Apollo 13. Uh, no one would know if they'd survived the plunge into Earth's atmosphere until they re-established communication. Odyssey Houston standing by, over. Okay, we read you, Jack. Odyssey Houston, we show you on the mains. It really looks great. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. Jim Lovell had made it back alive. The mission itself, of course, was a failure. But he never made it to the moon. Do you consider yourself a very lucky man or a very unlucky one? Oh, I consider myself a very lucky man. Uh, uh, very easily, my life could have ended uh, back in April 1970. As a matter of fact, right now, I take everything with it, you know, as it comes. This week, Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes are in Southern California doing what they do every year at this time, celebrating what they call Boom Day, the day the tank exploded. They may even see, of all people, Tom Hanks. He's starring in the feature film being made about the mission. It'll be out this June. You know, you know that they got back safely, but watching that gave me goosebumps. It's cool. Yeah, and, and by the way, numerologists at the beginning of the mission were saying Apollo 13, it was launched at 1.13 in the afternoon. 13, 13, 13. You oh, shouldn't be doing this. NASA is not superstitious. They have never had another mission labeled 13 since that one. Wow. Yeah. It's Great great piece. Thank, Thank you, you, Brian. Right. Thanks, Brian. Yeah.